Hello and welcome to the Canadian Culture Corner. I'm your host, Joe. Today I'm trying to advance the game a little. Uh, I'm not doing a great job. The internet is utter garbage today. Um, well, what else is new? So this is going to be a shorter video, and I'm going to compare and contrast superpowers. How Stan Lee and the other older generation of uh, comic book writers and creatives made really cool superpowers and had the character's um, personality not only match but kind of seem to heighten just how cool the powers were. Uh, good examples are these are Cyclops, Magneto, uh, Green Lantern, uh, you look at Superman, Spider-Man, and even the supervillains had really cool powers in a lot of cases. You look at, uh, well, Bastion. Uh, I know he's not originally like an older era villain, but he's still a cool villain. Uh, you look at uh, Exodus. You look at, yeah, I know they're 90s, but all right, for an older villain. Let's try Mystique. She's really cool. Um, you look at... You look at... Uh, the lag's gonna kill me. Why is the lag just freaking out today? Okay, seriously. Yeah, I'm gonna cuss. What the fuck is wrong with this? Um, okay, I'm starting to realize why so many people eventually decided to quit Champions. Because, well, when you were, it requires super high speed internet just to move across, you know, one area. It's just disappointing. Now, because, you know, like, now I understand why in the country you can't play games like this. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bitter and annoyed at this point because I've been trying to play the same level for about an hour. Alright, so. You've got villains like Mystique. You've got villains even such as Mr. Sinister. Uh, you look at... Venom, Carnage, uh, hey, I even think Shocker's abilities are cool, even though Shocker's a bit of a joke. Uh, you look at villains such as Hobgoblin in the original 80s comics was really cool. Superman had Brainiac, Darkseid. Well, Darkseid really originally belonged to Orion, I know. Um, you look at... You look at... Uh, uh, Raz al Ghul. You look at... You know, like, these old villains... Were very cool. And... You compare with it with the fact that there are no supervillains currently being used in most superhero comics these days. And you also look at, like, that little uh, Marvel girl, or whatever her name was, is over in Marvel Comics, the one who can make giant hands. That's such a weird power. Why would you... Okay, I know Beast kind of had that, but... Eventually they realized how dumb that power was, and just simply made him focused a bit more on the strength and the, well, furry aspect, I guess you could say. Um, okay, I'm just kind of looking around. Let's draw them out. All right, now I stop fighting, and I wait. And the thing is, 
that this like I'm not going to touch on any other aspect other than the fact that superhero fiction today isn't particularly well written. It's not very compelling. Because the problem is, yeah, okay, I understand you do have to occasionally write up the character. And what I mean by that is, uh, write their abilities upwards. Like, no, they're so great. Um, and whatnot. And that's fine doing that. Hey, you know, like, you do have to at some point write up a character. But, and write about how, you know, talented and skilled they are or powerful. But you, what you need to do is also kind of write them downwards. Not morally or anything. Just write them downwards in their abilities. Like, you need to start them off without all that many great abilities. Like, in achievements at the beginning of your run. And just, for example, uh, you've got Cyclops. He doesn't start off with too many achievements. Or even Static Shock. That's a better example. Static Shock, at the beginning of the cartoon, didn't really know how to use his abilities. And his abilities were pretty puny. That's just a fact. Now, what was more impressive was how he used them. And boy, how he did he fig quickly figure out how to use them and end up really cool. Him and Gear. And the thing is, later, they're... They've learned how to, you know, how to basically kick a lot of A. Uh, I'm not going to cuss because I don't feel like it right now. Um, and I'm probably going to cuss because I'm about to die. And this tendency on the part of the brilliant Dwayne McDuffie, who is one of my favorite comp superhero writers of all times. Like, the good dude was freaking cool. Uh, he knew his genre. Uh, I disagree with which Green Lantern he chose. He should have gone with Hal. And I really think that he should have just brought back Steel as the uh, black character to be a founder. And instead of Hawkgirl, how about Maxima? She's such a cooler character. I mean, really? Hawkgirl? The way they wrote Hawkgirl sucked. Then again, the way they didn't really write Jon Stewart very well, so... Whereas Steel could have been... Oh my gosh, Steel's such a great character. And Jon Stewart is a better character in the comics. I mean, he's a philosopher. And the way he approaches architecture and engineering is just... Rather fascinating. Seriously. Uh, read his miniseries at the beginning of the 1990s. Oh my gosh, it is so good. Uh, sorry, I ended up gushing. So, Dwayne McDuffie, yeah. Flawed writer. I'm just saying. He did not real like he couldn't really write Green Lantern. Then again, he was also held back by Bruce Tim. I would argue, Tim was okay. I'm gonna commit sacrilege here, and the guys working with him were uh, how do I put it? They did a good job for a while with Batman Superman, but. Well, in recent years, they've not been terribly good. And this element has... This element to them has, and their work, has kind of, I find, overshadowed a lot of their work. I know it's not popular to point out that Bruce Tim's kind of gone nuts. I mean, his Harley movie was just garbage. And I, honestly, I didn't know anyone could create hot messes that bad. And I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, well, there's the recent comic book stuff. Da, da, da. Yeah, I know. But still, that's not as bad as that Harlequin movie. It was terrible. It has to rank up there as one of the as worse than even Batman and Robin. Yeah, I went there. Worse than BV well, BS and the two Justice League movies. Which I don't care what anyone says. Those are trash. Those are trash. Pure trash. And 
that's the thing. Like, you've got these these writers who don't seem to know how to do this because the power has to be inextricably linked to the hero and and their personality and their personality revolves around it a little and their it should also kind of affect their backstory a little but this marvel girl and the reason i say marvel is just because i'm rather fond of the second captain marvel the black one who was really cool i mean when i was growing up reading comics she was the captain marvel i knew so uh the first one i just fought the only thing memorable about him was dying which means he was not memorable sorry folks uh, as to Carol Danvers, she's Ms. Marvel. So, yeah, I'm not going to call her Captain because she's iconically Ms. Marvel. Ah, oh, frick. Okay, game's done. Uh, and as to, well, as to, well, all right, we're just going to close this up. As to... Uh, the... Here, I'll just max this. As to... Today's work, they just... They don't even give personalities. They just say, oh, well, he or she is perfect. Vive la résistance! Long live the revolution! And whatnot. Okay. But you need to set up a motivation first. And the powers... I mean, giant hands. Who's going to read that? Now, I'm not saying the character can't be successful. I'm not saying the character... Like, you know, throw the character completely out there. Because maybe with a revamped power set... Maybe something can be salvaged from the character. And I don't know. And maybe with a skilled enough writer like Chris Claremont or Jeff Jones or something, you can maybe write something good. I mean, they've had their failures too, so it's not like they're perfect. I mean, Jeff Jones' uh, Teen Titans run was terrible. And his Flashpoint run, oh my gosh, that was physically painful to read. It was horrible. You could, you could actually see his his career going up in flames, and his him just like that's the moment when his career ended. I find as a writer, he was just, oof, dude, like, oh man, oh that was physically painful. So yeah, uh, you know, like the powers need to be. Front and center, yes, but alongside the character's personality. Because you can... Like... You can give a character great powers... And no personality... And no one's going to really get attached to it. I mean... Okay, Dan would disagree with me. New Warriors. A lot of them don't have very good personalities. I mean, Lance? Who even cares about that character? He's not a very good character. He's not compelling. He's good... And that's a case where his powers, you know, you forget what his powers are because, well, he's so bad. Firestar. Okay, she has fire powers. The problem is her personality is nothing, so you forget all about her. And that's where she has cool powers, no personality, so she's brought down. And then you might have the perfect example of a good combination of personality and powers. I would argue you have Superman. You have Green Lantern, both Kyle Rayner and Hal Jordan. Even John Stewart. I mean, the guy's freaking cool. Um, you look at Power Rangers, Tommy Oliver. You look at uh, Aisha. You look at who else? Well, Leo, as Dan would likely say, point out. So, yeah. If you're going to make your own superheroes, at least make the powers compelling. Make them interesting. Make them iconic. Don't just throw really stupid powers or, oh, all the power in the universe as uh, the Marvel movies pretty much gave to each character. And and just say, okay, they're all super strong, as strong as Thor. 
Because, like, Captain America stopping Thanos' punch. Like, that was stupid. And, yeah. So, you got to set limits to your character. And then they have to slowly overcome some of them. But there always should be certain limits to the character. And there should also be a set personality. And, you know, you, you got to give flavor to the character. So, anyway, that's enough for my rants today. So if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you disagree with me, please leave a comment. I'll read it. If you agree with me, okay, well, that's fine. I'll read your comment anyways. But as I said, like, hell, tell me what hero you think really has a great set of powers and great uh, personality. Which ones you don't find very compelling or interesting. Because they're not all going to be as awesome as Magneto, Xavier, Superman, Batman, and on the female heroine front, Captain Marvel, uh, uh, Wonder Woman. Even Black Cat's really cool in her pre-97 depictions. You look at... Um, you look at... Uh, shoot. Carol Ferris. That's who I was thinking there. Star Sapphire. She's really cool. So, yeah. Like, share, subscribe, and leave a